morning, church. Welcome. This is the Lord's day. This Hallelujah. is the day that we will lift our praise and our worship Amen. to Him. Yes, Lord. You want to take a moment to just say, Lord, we prepare our hearts. Yes, Lord. We prepare our hearts for you to come today yes, to touch Lord. us afresh, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Yes. We want our hearts, God, to represent you. Yes. Hallelujah. So we thank you for the time that we have together today. Yes, God. We give you praise. We thank you for the privilege Lord. to worship and to lift up your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. May our songs, Father, may the word, the bread of life, Father, yes. minister to each heart today. Hallelujah. Cause us, Father, to know your great love. Yes, Lord. Your great compassion for us, God. Hallelujah. We thank you and we worship you today, Jesus. Yes. We join our hearts today, Father. We join our hearts today. And all the saints, Father. Giving you glory. Giving you the honor that is due your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Your name, Lord, be lifted high today. Hallelujah. About everything. Yes. And maybe you're feeling discouraged today. Maybe your heart is heavy with all of the things that have happened in our world but God is still on the throne yes. God is still in control yes. and he loves you let God fill your place right where you're at right now let his love come and saturate you let it comfort your heart lift your heart to him as we praise Lord today just let your heart be joined with us today as we praise him and let that spirit of heaviness turn into rejoicing and praise before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Join with us today.
right over you, the only one. Hallelujah. You speak that love over us right now, God. That you're the only one that can make changes, God. You're the only one, Jesus, that can turn that morning into death, God. Yes. And we thank you today, Lord, that we can reach out. Yes. And we grab hold of that yes. and claim that, Lord, for our yes, lives Lord. today, Father. Yes, no matter what we see going around us, God, we know, Jesus, Lord, you are in control. Yes. And so we will lift up our eyes, we'll lift up our gaze, Father. We will look higher, Lord, into you, into what you have for our lives, for the life of our country, for the life of our yes. nation, Father. We know, God, that you are in control. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank yes, you today. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, God. Praise Hallelujah. your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we say that you are worthy of all. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all, Lord You're Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let our praises, Lord, Hallelujah. show you, God, just Praise how much we know God. that you are worthy. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
hurting today the Bible says and I had shared the scripture I believe last week in Psalms it says that, that those that love your law have great peace and nothing 
nothing causes them to stumble. And so if you're in a place of just anxiety and fear, wondering about the future, you need to know that your God has been to your future. He's been with you today and he'll be there tomorrow. And he is with you. And we can claim that peace and be thankful for what God has given us through Jesus Christ. So welcome to Elsinore Christian Center this morning. We're so glad that you could be with us. And um, we appreciate so much to people's comments about the services. And we don't know when we're going to be meeting as regathering together with everything that's been going on. But uh, thank God that we can talk to you and touch you. And I really believe that there's an impartation, an impartation to us. The word impartation in the Bible in the first chapter of Romans talked about giving away. God has designed the church services for us to give away what God has given us. So uh, take everything from his presence today and the word that you're going to hear. But we'll let you know, uh, for you that are part of ECC and that are in our area, when we will be gathering. And uh, we're just wanting to be sensitive of the health issues right now. So uh, just stay tuned. And uh, God's got everything under control. Amen? Amen. 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 So just a couple little announcements. Uh, today is Mission Sunday, and I just encourage uh, our church family to be faithful and, and giving uh, whether you drop it by the office or my house or put it in the mail, uh, we thank you for being faithful, and we just encourage you to be faithful. Just a couple little uh, things about last year. Usually when people are here, you can see the screen there. We have some stats up on the screen, but I just wanted to let you know how we did last year as far as uh, missions. Uh, in 2000. 19, we had $6,745 come in for missions. Uh, last year, we were a little bit down, uh, almost a little over $400. We had $6,352 come in for missions. And so we were a little bit down in our missions giving. And uh, even about our tithing, our tithing last year was down a little bit. It was down 3.4%. 3.4%. Uh, our tithing went down last year. So I would just say to you, uh, just be faithful in your giving to the Lord, and uh, um, we appreciate your faithfulness. I want to talk to you today, uh, this message called The Seeds of Restoration. In our church, you can't see it, but we have a banner up, and it says 2021, uh, 2021 is the year of restoration. And that's our prophetic theme this year. And I want to say to you, if you missed last week's message and we were talking about vision, uh, go on YouTube. Uh, it's on there. And uh, But I want to talk to you today about the seeds, the seeds of restoration. And uh, I want to say this. God wants you to experience restoration uh, on every level of your life. Physically, your health coming back. Mentally, being able to regain where there's been things where there maybe perhaps been strongholds or struggles mentally, uh, even emotionally. I want to tell you that our God is the God of restoration. And he wants to restore you on every level. And I believe even financially, God wants to bless us on every level of our life. And the book of Hebrews, uh, the 11th chapter, verse 6, says this. That God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want to say it again. Hebrews 11.6, the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so as we approach this new year, we're approaching it in faith. Um, we're approaching it having our faith in God. And um, the question might be, uh, the year of restoration, what does that mean? I believe it means on every level, God wants to restore you, your family, relationships, and I believe with the events that have been going on, our nation, God wants us to restore, he wants to restore our nation, America. And there are some of you that watch this maybe from other countries. I know someone from that watches this from Argentina. We welcome you. God bless you. And uh, we're so glad that you could be with us. 
there is restoration and there is blessings in 2021. But I want to talk to you this morning about seeds, about seeds. We're in wintertime here, and there's not too much talk about planting because we know that winter is going to be over and the spring is coming, and people will begin to plant seeds into the ground for the different harvest that we need. But I want to say to you, believers this morning, saints of God, that our life is a seed. Our life is a seed. Our gifts and resources that God has given us are seeds. And the question for you and for me, what plans and what thoughts do you have for sowing and reaping in 2021? What plans and thoughts do you have for sowing and reaping in 2021? And so we want to look at a couple of scriptures this morning. I hope that you have your Bibles and the first one that you can, I'll just wait a second, get your Bible and turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter, Matthew, the sixth chapter and verses 19 to 21 is what we're going to be looking at this morning. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 19 to 21. These are Jesus' words on the Sermon on the Mount. And so I want to read that now. Do not, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus, in this Sermon on the Mount to his disciples, was talking about priorities in your life as a believer. Priorities in your life as a believer in this sermon. And he began to talk in this Sermon on the Mount to his disciples about treasures, your treasures, what I value. And I want to ask you that question, what is the most important thing that you value in your life? Jesus is talking to you and I about values. But if we become a Christian, he gives us new values. He gives us kingdom values because we're children of the kingdom of God, praise God. And so we get new values. But what's really important, we're being asked this morning. What's really important? And Jesus is talking about the issues of the heart, the issues of your of the heart. And he's talking about in there about laying up for yourself treasures on the earth. Because we all know that when we leave this world, everything we've ever accommodated or accomplished, accumulated, it's all somebody else is going to have it. It's going to turn to rust. It's going to turn uh, the moth are going to eat it. And he talked in here about the Moth will destroy and the rust will destroy and the thieves will break in. And I think we think that, you know, what can we do for safety and security so I can protect my stuff? Our church here has cameras. We have security systems. At my house, I have a ring, uh, the new ring where you can see what's going on, people coming and going and movement and all those things. Why do we buy those things? Why do we buy cameras? Why do we have security systems in our home as well as our offices? We do it so we can protect our stuff. And it's a smart thing to do. Because in this world, rust will destroy, moth will eat, and people will break in and steal what you have. But that's not where our treasure is, according to the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. A lot of times when we think about the thought of somebody violating us, violating, stealing my stuff, something rusting, something being destroyed, uh, people can be angry. People can feel violated. People can feel depressed. But Jesus is saying all those things are going to happen in life, but so into the kingdom of God. So into the kingdom of God. And that's every one of us that's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand that God has an accounting system. And I don't know how many angels he has in his accounting system, but he sees everything. He sees our gifts that we give. He sees what um, what we're being faithful to do with the talents, the time, all the things that we have that he sees it all. There is an accounting that we're going to stand before the Lord someday. 
And so we need to understand that as believers, that God sees everything. And he says in verse 21, where your treasure is, where your treasure is. Think on this for a moment. Where is your treasure? Is it on the kingdom? Is it about using your time and resources for the kingdom of God and realizing that's eternal, but everything else that we would possess? Now, make no a mistake about it, God blesses his people. God blesses his people, and he wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be able to have a home and a car and food on the table and all those things. He promised that in Matthew 6, if you were to read on in this chapter. But he asked that question, where is your treasure? And I want to say this, make no doubt about it, that your heart and your wallet or your purse, they're connected. My heart and my wallet, they are connected together because it deals with what I value, what's important to me. So Jesus is saying there, don't lay up for yourself treasure just on the earth, but lay up treasures in heaven where it's eternal. It's eternal. My heart is connected to my money and my resources. If my life is dedicated to Jesus and his kingdom, we must not be distracted about priorities. And what Jesus was talking about here is invest in kingdom priorities. Invest in what's really important. One of the things uh, I have never in my 69 years seen the government giving out checks to people despite everything that's going on. We're taxpayers. And I've never seen government hand out $1,200 checks last year and families and the children. And, and then some of you got a stimulus check. I, I don't know if I got mine yet. And maybe you got yours. I've never seen anything like that before. And it's to help people. It's to invest back into people for the loss. But I want to tell you, that what God has for you and I, as far as investing in us, you can't put any type of measurement on it. The government will do what it can, but God is not like the government of the United States or any other government. He's telling us, invest into my kingdom with your priorities. I'm the one that will take care of you. I'm the one that wants to bless you. And we need to believe this year that we are going to be blessed and our needs are going to be met. But we must have our treasure in the kingdom of God and not letting the things of this world and the money of this world have us. I hope you hear that clearly. Where is our treasure this morning? What do you value? The second thing I want to look at this morning is in Galatians, the sixth chapter. If you'll turn in your Bible, the Galatians, the sixth chapter, we're going to look at verses six to ten. One of the neat things about a new year is new opportunities. New opportunities that we have in God, of God, what God is going to be taking us on. This is a, a, a year, every year is an adventure. And Every day that we live is a gift from God. And it should really humble us for us to be thankful that God, thank you for the gift that you've given me. But in Galatians 6, chapter, verses 6 to 10, let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will will the flesh reap corruption. But if he who sows to the spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. We are taught, even in our local church, about uh, feeding and nurturing the souls of our people. Our worship today, you hearing the word of God, is all about nurturing. 
is about feeding your soul as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. But it says very clearly that as the church is that place of a feeding place for God's people, we are also to share in all good things with him who teaches. What does that mean? It means materially with our church and our pastors, our local congregation. Because God has made that relationship. One of the things that concerns me about the younger generation and about our country is that everyone has become more consumer minded. I'm a consumer. And so when we just think of ourselves as just receiving and receiving and receiving, even the gifts that we have received even this year uh, and, and last year, and it's just the mercy of God. But in our whole thinking and, and the generation that are younger than I am, even among Christians, that that mentality is, I'm a consumer. Don't expect anything from me. I just am there for the blessing. But God's word here is what Paul told the Galatian church. It says, let him who has taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. There is a responsibility for us to do our part, but also for you to do your part. We can't get away from that. And then he says in the next verse, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. He's writing to Christians. Don't be deceived. It's a warning to us, believers. It's a warning to us, believers. And he says there, no one can mock God and think that he's not going to be accountable for it. We cannot mock God uh, with our attitudes. And it's not only for that. And this is talking against the Christian, but we think that this might apply to unbelievers. It, it does. But Paul is talking here to this church about do not be deceived. No one can mock God. We will reap what we've sown. We are going to be accountable. It's a sobering reality of that accountability, accountability to God. And he says there, what you sow, what you plant, you're going to reap a harvest of the good or you're going to reap a harvest of the bad. And this is the thing is, we choose. We choose. Will we reap a harvest of the good or the bad? No harvest at all because nothing has been planted because I'm still thinking I'm a, just a consumer. Paul said there, he said, if you just sow to your flesh, to just pleasures, even carnal desires, you abuse your body, sexual sins, Vices that we can be involved with, the Bible says we will reap corruption, which leads to death. God does not want us to experience corruption, believers, saints of God this morning. He's talking to Christians. If all I do is sow to my flesh, my pleasure, carnal desires, habits, vices, abuse my body, I will reap corruption. And that corruption is death. But there's a promise there that if I sow to the spiritual, if I sow to my heart, the Bible says in Psalm 24, 3, uh, who may come to the hill of the Lord? Who may ascend to see God? David wrote. The Bible says in Psalm 24, 3, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who has clean hands and a pure heart can ascend to the presence of God. This message today is seeds that we can plant for restoration. We can plant seeds of restoration. Oh, pastor, you're just talking about money. All you pastors talk about money and those things. You know, let me say this. We've got to get this right. We've got to get this right. And if we have been disobedient or I just think that you know what? It's not time to go to church right now. We have, there's so many things going on in our society. There's so much fear. There's, this is not a time to sow. This is not a time to plant seed. This is not a time to give, make pledges for missions. And you that are part of ECC know that we have, we ask people if they would commit to maybe three uh, value, uh, levels of giving, 300 500 and $1,000 to give the missions because we know it makes a difference as well as our giving. Again, it's about planting seeds in good ground and being a blessing even around the nations. 
our church is and for you to be a part of that someday when we stand before the Lord and making a difference now. If we sow to the spiritual, clean hands and pure hearts, if we're pursuing being filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about this more in the week ahead, if we're, if we're pursuing being filled with the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit take over our life, our life, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit in you is a liberal thing. It is not a restrictive. When I'm filled with the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, I am more liberal to give and to praise and to serve and to honor and to sacrifice. If I'm not, I can be a consumer and I withhold. Don't let your circumstances keep you from sowing seed. I hope you hear that today. We don't want to die early because we pursue carnal means and the world system and we're focused on wrong things. Talking to Christians now. He says in verse 9, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Oh, that is so powerful. I hope that you'll read that. Don't grow weary. Don't become tired doing the right things. Giving, serving, loving. Don't become tired and ask this question. And some of you might be asking some of this question now. God, is this really making any difference? Does this mean anything to give, to tithes, to give to missions and to sacrifice in other areas? Does it mean anything at all? Is it making any difference? I want to tell you from the testimony of God's word, who he who holds the books, the answer is yes, because you're making changes in people's lives because of your obedience and your sacrifice. I want to say it again. You're making a difference in people's lives because of your giving and your sacrifices and your serving. And so what God is telling us, and I want you to hear this clear, don't quit, don't give up. Yeah, but I don't think it's making a difference. It's making a difference because he says there that there is a harvest coming. That's the promise. God has a season for reaping. And at times people will give up before they don't receive their harvest. I want to say it again. God has a season for reaping. So the question is today, as I encourage you, if we get ready to close, what have you sown in the past? And what are you planning on sowing today and for this year? What is your plan to sow? Because God says you're going to reap. Don't become weary in well-doing, knowing that we will, we will reap, we'll receive the blessing if we don't give up, if we don't faint. And so he says there in verse 10, there's opportunities in 2021. He says, do good to all, especially, and let me just look at that again. Do good to all, showing mercy and patience, serving others. And of course, Christians, yes. He mentions there, especially those who are of the household of faith. Who's he talking about? Local church, your brothers and sisters. Let us do good to them. Let us bless them. Let us serve them. Let us serve all men. Deeds that are done out of love and servanthood. We've got a brand new year. Great opportunities. God. I want to see that my life is a seed. That I want to see the seeds of restoration happen to me and my family and to those around me that I love. But again, it's a seed. A seed that's done with joy and cheerfulness. Yeah, it is a talking about money, but it's talking about all the other attitudes of the heart. What I can do is my 24-7. Every day is a gift. Lord, when I wake up in the morning, who could I be a blessing to? Who could I call? Who could I do something to bless someone? The very spirit of the flesh and the very spirit of the age we live is that I'm just waiting for you to bless me. I'm a consumer in the way I think. Cast that down, brothers and sisters. We're, we're not consumers. We're those who sow like a farmer. 
And God is the one that's faithful. God is the one that says, you will reap. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. So let's sow this year in tithes. Let's sow into missions. Our thinking might be, I'm holding on. It's not time to give. But let me tell you something. Your faith gives and trust God. Your faith gives and trust God. Fear and self-preservation always withholds. Fear and self-preservation. Those are Listen to those words. Fear and self-preservation always withholds what should be rightfully released. As someone said one time, if we will give within our hands, and it's material things, and it's all lot of other things from our heart, if we will give within our hands, God will release within his hands to you. We're in a season that we're, we can't go to church, but I refuse to see my life as just being a consumer, and I'll do everything I can because it's my responsibility, not just as a pastor, but as a believer, just like you watching this morning, that if we have a responsibility that our life is a seed, and God says, spend your life in being a blessing to others. We are blessed because we give ourselves away. Our life is a seed. Restoration on all these different levels comes from planting our seeds and believing God is the one that sees it. And when we need it, It'll be there. God is never late. God sees everything. He sees your prayers as a seed. Hallelujah. So don't give up praying, planting, giving, loving, serving, being patient, waiting on God. God's going to bless your seeds in 2021. Amen. I'd like for you to do something right now. I'm going to put my wallet out, and maybe if you go grab your purse or just your wallet, and if you would hold it up, and we're just going to have a prayer together, and I'm going to pray a blessing. I'm going to pray a blessing, and I want you to agree with me in that blessing, that God, you're the God who is more than enough. You're going to bless our finances this year. you got your wallet up. you got your purse up. Father, we, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters, people of faith, saints of God, that as we start this new year, that we would be thinking about not just the spirit of the world, which is to consume, but what I could do to plant and be a blessing. And so, Lord, I pray for your people that they would be liberal. They would be liberal. They would think about ways that they could be a blessing to others. God, that there would be ties, there would be missions, there would be these different things that are going on in their lives, sowing and reaping, we believe it. So, Lord, a hundredfold blessing, we pray. We're believing you for it, God. You're going to meet every need, meet every need. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the harvest that's coming in. Hallelujah. The harvest is coming in, and you will be taking care of your people this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I hope that you believe that. I believe that if you pray over your seed and the things that you do, God says we're going to reap a harvest. Amen. So we will see you next week right here and uh, share this video. Watch the ones that we've done in the past. Live your life as a seed to be a blessing to others. Thank you for watching today and we will see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.